Welcome everybody. Another Wednesday has gone by. Can you believe it? I don't. It, the, it goes so fast. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Big, big show tonight. Uh, my name is Scott. Welcome if you're first time uh, meeting us. Um, my name is Scott. Welcome to my Go, uh, Go Small Live Large YouTube channel all about the Class B RV experience. And what we do here on What's Up Wednesday is we learn together, we share together, and then you decide what's best for you. Big show tonight. We've got a newbie van owner in an embassy RV, our first embassy RV customer on the show tonight. Um, and she's going to be joining us in just a couple minutes. Let me kind of run through what we're doing here. As you probably are aware, 39 consecutive What's Up Wednesdays. Ladies and gentlemen, we are creeping up on one year of What's Up Wednesday. I can't tell you anything I've done that consistently for a long time. So I'm really proud of myself. And thank you for being here. This is really about you because it's a live Q&A. We do have some prepared content. And um, that includes where are we coming from uh, to you and your eyeballs. Uh, we're coming at you from the greater Los Angeles area. If you look at that little tiny dot, there's actually Orange, California. And I'm going to start putting up the weather and gasoline because gasoline is going to be our topic of news this evening. And here in Orange, it's cooled down. We had a big rainstorm a couple days ago. And if the gasoline, if you look at me, zoom in, zoom in here for you. I had too much caffeine today. Um, what I want you to take a look at is the at the top of the image in the on the right is the gasoline using Gas Buddy, our VR's best friend. Look at the swing in prices, almost a dollar. And I am telling you that is true. Costco's got the cheapest gas. Um, if you can find a Costco, it's about three eighty a gallon. But just around the corner is a Shell station selling for four eighty. I have no rhyme or reason. It's just the craziest thing. Um, where are you watching from? That's always important to me. And we like to call up the the, uh, the countries that um, we're not familiar with, um, in terms of you know, hey, I'm watching from uh, Israel was the last one, um, so let me know where you're watching from. And this is our our format we like to use. So we've got our special guest tonight. She's coming on here in just a minute. Headline news, recommendation of the week, and song and pick pet pick of the week. Tonight's our special guest. You'll meet here in just a moment, uh, Sherry from Wisconsin. She's an Embassy RV customer. Speaking of Embassy RV, you do not want to miss this. Next Monday, the 11th at 2.30 p.m. Central, uh, we've got Terry Minix, VP. Zoom in for you. Um, he's going to be talking about a brand new model. And uh, he and I have been going back and forth. And I think you're going to be pretty excited. Um, in fact, I'm certain you are going to be pretty excited. Um, so, um, put that on your calendar. Don't miss us. 2.30 PM central on Monday, the 11th, which I think is a holiday for a lot of folks. Speaking of holidays, boy, am I doing work in overtime, putting some, um, events together. Um, if you're in the LA and San Jose area, uh, come join me at Bass Pro Shops, uh, for a little roundup where we get together for an hour, hour and a half and just swap stories, do some van tours and, um, get an event bright ticket. And I've got three Van Buries that I'll be announcing later this week. So you want to check out my website uh, toward the weekend. Three Van Buries in the Tucson area, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and New Orleans. I'm so excited. Um, we've been talking about this for a long time, and uh, I'm seriously on the move. So if you're into vans, you're into places, you're into cool fellowship with van folks, um, RVers, and cool people, subscribe to the channel, please. Dim Sum. If you haven't made dim sum in your van, you need to watch this video and make dim sum. It was so much fun. I had a great time. So with that, it's always about your live Q&A. And we got some great questions coming in here already tonight. But without further ado, what I want to do is bring in Sherry to the uh, into the studio uh, to join us. So Sherry, um, welcome. And uh, just thank you so much for taking time out. There she is um, in her embassy RV. Now tell us where you are located right now. <laughs> Well, first of all, I have to say happy 39. And now I can always be known as number 39. And that's what I'll claim as my age. <laughs> you see? So, and a big Fair shout enough. out for it. all those people saying hello. Um, I couldn't do it without you. And I am currently in my, uh, in a Walmart parking lot in, uh, in the city where I live because it has great Wi-Fi here. So I knew I could be. I, tr I tried the park that didn't have as as good a Wi-Fi, so I'm coming to you from Walmart in Nina, Wisconsin. That is so funny. Um, it's funny how the vans roll, right? And how cellular networks are not always that seamless. Um, so just thank you again. And I know you I, took a special night off. I got some grocery shopping done before coming oh, on. 
<laughs> highly productive. Well, thank you again for taking time. We know that um, Wednesdays are special in your in your and some of your passion projects. So um, thank you for um, rescheduling to to be part of this. And I'm really pleased that you're the first embassy customer. There's some other folks that would want to be here, um, but. Um, I've got some questions for you, um, but this is really about answering viewer questions and kind of sharing your story. So um, let me just kind of pop in the chat here and let us know where folks are coming in from. Uh, so Katmandu, we saw your comment. Thank you for that. Talking about uh, some of the people you meet. That's an interesting idea. So I will take heart. Um, Mason, Mike, I'm hoping you did not pull your 30 amp service out the side of your van, sir. Not that I haven't done that. I have. So hopefully that is... Um, uh, going to be easy for you. Um, and here we got Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Love Louisville. Oh my gosh. We were just talking about that the other night. Um, Sarasota Springs in the house. Thank you for that. Um, waiting on the embassy traveler BA. Good job. Um, and this is kind of fun. So here's Dr. Cooper. Um, love the embassy RV coverage, especially the traveler. So we're going to be talking and asking Sherry. Yeah. Right. Asking some Sherry, um, some questions about her van in, in particular. So, um, and here's another embassy uh, wannabe. So this is Elaine. You might be recognizing these names. Um, yeah. Because you're kind of the, yes, uh, I do. The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're kind of the guru well, of the I'm, embassy. I'm RV, one of, uh, one of three account. musketeers. One of three musketeers. <laughs> I, I, you know, I have got Robert and Bob <laughs> to help. <laughs> well, that's great. And we'll definitely want to find out how people learn more um, about that. Um and uh, here, um, guy wants to know: Is there an Emmy Award uh, far behind for um, Sherry? Probably not too far behind. <laughs> right. And here's Ron. And Ron, you'll you'll uh, like to know that Sherry's already asked me about my guitar lessons, how that's coming along. So we've already covered that topic tonight. Um, so let's start with this. Deborah's got a good question, and um, like I said, I've got some prepared questions just to kind of keep this rolling. But um, Deborah's got a great one. So um, Sherry, Deborah wants to know um, what are the top three things you love about your embassy, and what is one thing you would change? And hi to both of you. So hi, Deborah. Yeah. All yours. Hi, hi, All Deborah. Yours. Deborah's always a great contributor in the group uh, in our Facebook group. So. Uh, three things that I love, well, that drew me to embassy was the, the fact that there was no generator. I am like the queen of no mods. I just want to use this. So uh, it did not have a generator. Um, I love how many 12 volt, how, how many of the things are 12 volt versus the 110. So the DC versus the AC. So pair that with lithionics and your battery really lasts a long time. I think I'm going to be able to go for a long time without plugging in when, I, uh, when, I, when I'm out there on the road. And then it's really the community, the embassy community, the people from embassy that built the van, and the people in the Facebook group. And I have all of your names here written in front of me. And if I start to read them, I'm going to cry. But um, just such a great community of people and the freedom that it gives. So it's really all about the people and the integrity of embassy um, and the fact that it was, was low maintenance for me, a, a solo female traveler. I feel like I can actually handle this. So, and what would I change? Um, probably if it, uh, right now there's one outlet that has two 12 volt USBs. I'd probably have another, maybe another outlet that had some 12 volt USBs because I have a lot of equipment to plug in sometimes. So that's maybe what I would change. That is a short list of what would I change? Holy cow. Good job. <laughs> um, that's a great question. And um, I'm so glad that already you've kind of discovered, Sherry, that while the van is super important, it's a tool to do some really great things with some really great people. And I think that that's um, probably one of the biggest things that kind of annoy me a little bit is that people are so wrapped up around the van. Super important. Don't get me wrong. Big investment. But it's everything the van enables you to do. And I'm just thrilled you're already kind of discovering that. It's uh, You're doing this in a Walmart parking lot. Like a trooper <laughs> right out of the gate. It's so awesome. I just love it. Um, so let's see. I I'm just kind of curious. Um, so are you... Um, currently working are you give us a little, little tiny bit of your background some people may know that um i know a little bit but working sure. um how do you we met at um one of the round um embassy campouts so just give us a little background yeah so i uh we're i'm working towards retirement i have to work right now 30 hours a week usually it's 35 or so um to get benefits yet hoping 
next year I can cut back a little bit more. Um, and I work in the IT field, so I support construction companies all over the United States with a certain type of software. So uh, staying connected was very important to me, and I think I have uh, figured and worked that out, and I can expand on that a little bit if you want. But, um, yep, so I am um, slowly going to so pull sounds, back. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds like and, you're working uh, on the road a little bit then too, right? I will, yep. I'll, I'll need to work fr from the road. So I have been testing out different things this last year, and I think I've found a good mix of things. So um, uh, we'll see. But I and no, I'm I won't be full time. But I have a better appreciation for people who are full time. I think that maybe I would have put a little bit more thought into the layout if I was full time. I could see why people really need to think about that. But um, I'm totally happy with this. And I'll be um, I'll be in it a couple like probably half of the year probably on and off yeah I need Which to get out of Wisconsin bit, um, for the winter <laughs> go south go south <laughs> yeah. um, oh my gosh we got some great you guys have some great dialogue I I'm not sure what even some of these things mean so here's a guy talking to Robert even a blind squirrel finds the occasional acorn so you guys have a big chit chat going amongst yourselves and I am not privy to so that's pretty funny hey, um, here's hey, Wisconsin guy is awesome Wisconsin. Yep. Yes. there Thomas yeah. is in Wisconsin uh, <laughs> guy keeps track of our embassy boondockers list on our group he's a great resource yeah that is so <laughs> great um, let's see so here's Carl uh, hello from upstate just bought a 2021 Travato G congratulations sir I'm heading to Florida in a couple of weeks to pick it up. Um, yeah, it's just, so that's kind of a good segue. Sherry, just talk about, I mean, you waited quite a while for your van, um, like a year, right? And then you finally yeah. pick it up. Just kind of tell us about your, your emotions, your feelings. I mean, that first night in your van, what did you, where did you stay? What did you do? After well, I, I actually stayed Even in the pickup. embassy parking lot and I had my <laughs> wonderful friends, Deb and Bob Scott from Florida came up and surprised me because I was I was actually going to go to a harvest house or, you know, I thought, ah, oh, don't stay in the embassy parking lot the first night, maybe the second night, you know, like, like, just go. And uh, but Bob and Deb surprised me. So we spent the night in the embassy parking lot and they rigged up an extra plug in for two vans. And uh, so we could plug in. And when I picked it up, I mean, I was just so grateful. I really wanted to meet all of the people that had a hand in making the van because, and one of the reason why I don't have a lot of things to change is because I just feel grateful that I can even have a van like this. I, I know that there's so many people out there that are in need. So um, I just, I was grateful and I wanted to meet the people and thank them for, and let them know that they're, they're part of, the, the things that I am able to do in the future with the van and what I'm going to do, they are world changers and they are part of that. So I just, I, I don't know. I was just really excited to meet them and thank them. Isn't that true? They're really dream enablers and um, mm -hmm. all the RV people in the industry that I, I interact with, I just remind them of that. It's so easy to be calloused about it. You know, it's just another van, but what it's, it, it causes, like you just so eloquently stated is, it enables people's dreams and they, I think need to be reminded of that. Um, so, yeah. so you drove out of the embassy area. Good job for Bob Scott. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they came up there. And uh, so tell us, um, you drove off out of embassy and I think I have a picture. Actually, let me show this to the group. Um, so we have a traveler. Uh, embassy is yep. kind of famous for three different floor plans. So maybe just kind of walk us through uh, for fo folks that don't know what we're looking at here. And I'll put this big screen for you. Maybe start at the cab and kind of walk backwards just a little bit. Yeah, well, I have the Embassy Traveler built on the Dodge Promaster, and I went that way because it was a little bit less expensive and something that I could afford. But I love all you Ford people out there, don't get me wrong. But the Promaster uh, worked for me, and I felt it could take me uh, places. So I have a pizza oven, and now I know why it's called a pizza oven. It gets quite hot in there, and I keep my bedding in there. But behind there, um, you have the two sofas which can either be two separate beds or electronically it can come together and make one big bed. Um, I plan on using it for the uh, just one, one side. Uh, and then behind the sofas, you actually have quite a bit of storage. So on the, um, the passenger side, 
there's like a pantry um, and there's a refrigerator and a freezer with separate controls so that if you don't want to use the freezer, you can use that for storage or you have a full blown freezer in there, which is so cool. And then there's a um, another storage area with shelves and a wardrobe. And on the other side, you have the kitchen sink, a microwave above the sink, a, a countertop, and then uh, the toilet of your choice, which is actually um, Embassy will give you the ability to do like a composting toilet, a lavio dry flush toilet. I don't know if they still put the cassette toilet in. Terry's not a fan of that, but you do have kind of uh, choices uh, for what kind of toilet you want and no black tank. Which is really kind of cool, right? <laughs> yeah, but don't be afraid of the black amazing. tank. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's really not as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Um, so, so you were uh, talking about your first night. So Sherry, um, Sherry shared a few pictures. So here you are. Um, yeah. And the, the colors, I'm kind of curious about the color. What is the exterior color? The exterior color actually is sandstone. So it's like a, oh. it's, it's, it's a little bit lighter than your wrap, Scott. So it's like a brown. And the reason why I picked it, picked that was because the name of my van is Mungu Bariki. <laughs> and that One is Swahili. <laughs> Mungu, Mungu Bariki, and that's Swahili for God bless. Because I learned oh, how to say cool. God bless you when I was over in Africa visiting my sponsor kids. And so I just thought that Mungu, God bless, should be gold, like a brown or a gold and not silver. So that's why I picked that. I love it. And when you it's walk into embassy... Yeah. Yeah. And when you walk into the embassy, they have that little plaque that says welcome with your name on it, which is kind of special, too. So, yeah. And then I very carefully um, put out, uh, struck out her last name so that she could put it in her title on the slide tonight. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I was trying to keep you incognito, but that's OK. So I'm um, sure you you got some great questions coming in, but I just want to share this because it kind of, it, again, it just capitalizes on the, on the van experience. I think people... And I'm, I'm really curious because you've got your van and now you've had it for, how long have you had it? Like six weeks now, maybe? Yeah, I picked it up August 9th. One of the hottest weeks in Indiana, like 90 something. And I had the van two days and I am, I did my first har Harvest Host experience. I went to Harvest Host and I was going to stay there like two nights and I got, got through and I was taking a client meeting, although I didn't have to participate a lot. And all of a sudden this wild storm came up and I'm like oh my gosh the van was rocking and the trees were blowing but luckily in the RV Hall of Fame Museum it's quite wide open there's the trees are smaller so I felt kind of safe but I'm like is the water going to flood up underneath the tires I mean it was really a bad storm I got down on my knees in between the two couches and I'm like saying Jesus, I have only had this van for two days. Please come storm. I am in this boat. Please come storm. <laughs> so, and You've then seen it Wizard actually, of Oz, right? <laughs> I know. And then it actually, then another storm came in at like three in the morning. Same thing. And uh, I found out the next day, like 21,000 people were without power in uh, Elkhart, Indiana. So my two days old, the van went through two storms. So anyways, uh, and then, and then I was going to stay another night, and I thought, no way, it's not going to rain in Wisconsin. So I drove from Indiana and made it into Wisconsin and stayed at a love truck stop. So I got a harvest house and a love truck stop under my belt <laughs> in the first week. <laughs> and the embassy parking lot to start with. That is yeah. so great. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think you will find um, weather in a van to be super special event once you get kind of past the learning curve of this thing is not going to blow away. Um, there is, I'm in uh, LA that rains like once every six months, huge storm. And I opened up all of the blinds so I could see the lightning and hear the thunder. And I just, I think it's one of the most coolest things in a van is to experience the storm. So hopefully that will uh, tame down for you a little bit. Um, and that's the a picture of the love's truck stop here, right? Um, mm -hmm. that you stay at with a Denny. So we got some great questions coming in. So let's get to cut to some of those and thank you for sharing that. I was just super curious and what that would be a great way to kind of roll in with a bunch of fans, right? When you pick up your van, right? Wouldn't that be too great? <laughs> um, we got a lot of folks coming in. So we got Charlotte, Corning, New York, 
Here's RV Home uh, in Georgia. Here's Kim and Tim. DFW coming up. Um, here's Hot Springs, Arkansas. Here's the Space Coast. We're going to be doing a thing wow. in, in the Space Coast here very soon, right? Um, Central Coast. Hey, Kathy, what's going on? Uh, might be in your neck of the woods. I don't know. Uh, Michael Clark. Mason Mike has a question for you here, Sherry. Uh, what made you pick the Embassy RV over the Travato or really any other van? Great, great question. How sure. long did you shop and what, what landed you on the Embassy? Yeah, well, I um, I started to look probably back. I, I started It started as a dream. I thought, you know, I'm... I, I, re- I can't drive a class A, but I think I can get one of these class Bs. So I started looking not really serious about 2014. And uh, and I even told wh- where I used to work, we had a dream manager or a dream coach that would, we would meet with and tell them our dreams and they'd help us get find resources. And it was his dream too, to kind of get a, so at the time I was thinking about a road trek. I said, I want to get one of those road trek things, you know, and, and go all over and volunteer and do service work well then um then I kind of thought "Mm," and it got to the point where I I said well if I use that van for 10 years divided by the how much it cost me that's a lot of traveling so maybe I should just forget about the van and then all of a sudden uh there was just some I I ran into people that had vans and I'm just like oh maybe maybe I'm getting some messages here so I started to look again and I actually was going to get a Travato that was it but I didn't think I could afford the KL or the, the lithium models because that was kind of like out there. And then I knew I'd have to deal with the generator. And I'm like, well, Sherry, you can do it. You know, you can you can do that generator thing. You could you just, you know, just just toughen up. And and then I was surfing the Web and I came across something called Go Small, Live Large about Embassy <laughs> RV innovation. And I started looking. And I'm like. Oh my gosh, there's no generator, no this. Ooh, maybe I could afford this. And then I came upon Roads of Life, Robert, and he had a few more videos. And I'm like, and then we were in the middle of COVID and I thought, oh, people tell you you should drive one, you should look at this. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can drive one. I don't really know. And then and then they were going to have a meetup. And I'm like, well, I'm only four and a half hours away from that campground. So in July of 2020, I went to the meetup after I... And Phyllis from the group, she let me tour her van. Greg from the group let me in. Uh, such great people there. And I, I got home and I sent him my check for the embassy. So, Michael, I was on the path for a Travato, but I will tell you that the embassy allows me to have lithium um, and is more in my price range. And it's and it's a great build. So I, wa- I did have Travato on my list, but I got converted to embassy. So... That's why, Michael. <laughs> Embassy won your heart. Um, and it's just such a yeah. great man. That, and again, the, the the innovation he puts in, the care and love and the build qualities. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I get the pleasure kind of behind the scenes as I do my Volta Brand Ambassador duties is climb through a lot of rigs on these on these lots. And let me, I'm telling you, you climb into an Embassy RV and it's like coming into a vault. Um, <laughs> there's something, and we know why they're special because he builds them very differently. But all the others, it's just, it's, it's just, it's all I can do to say, wow, this is a nice rent, nice van. I'm looking around like, oh my God, this <laughs> anyway, different story. Uh, man, that they're just pouring in tonight, Jerry. Um, I am really excited. We're going to do <laughs> RV news here in just a minute. And I, we got to show some of the interior. Um, some of it's behind you here, but um, here we got Atlanta in the house. Here's Kim. She's assuming we're doing something in DFW. We are. Um, so stay tuned. Um, Austin, can't wait to get to Austin again. Um, and here's Steve looking forward to his embassy traveler. Um, you probably recognize some of these names. Um, yeah, I know, right. Um, here's Nebraska. I don't really yes, remember seeing Marge. Nebraska very often. So yeah, is that Marge? Marge and, hey Marge. What's yeah, up? Marge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were at the, That's they awesome. were at the, uh, meetup. Mm-hmm. Were they? Okay. I'd have to see yep. you. Yeah. I'm a visual person, so I know um, it's all right. Here's Nashville, Nashville coming in. Um, speaking of Nashville, we're going to have an announcement on Monday when Terry joins um, the exclusive YouTube live with Go Small Live Large. Uh, we're going to announce a bunch of um, um, well Nashville stuff in, in particular. So you'll want to, and we got Sherry kind of helping us with that after um, that is made public with Terry. And speaking of Robert. Um, <laughs> So it uh, has a question here. Um, is there a group maybe on Facebook where people can go if they're interested in Embassy RV? Uh, what do you think, Sherry? 
Yes, yes, Tell there is. And maybe, maybe uh, well, if you go to Facebook and you search for Embassy Owners and Wannabe, in fact, let me just grab, here's my little, here's the little magnet that oh, yeah. Robert designed. We are Envoys of Innovation and Adventure. So search in Facebook for Embassy Owners and Wannabes. We would love to have you join, even if you're even if you're just thinking and you're not sure if you want an embassy or you own another RV, we welcome. It's a great community. Um, and Robert from Roads of Life and his wife, Susan, kind of they they help um, admin and Bob Scott and Deb Scott. And so the three of us right now, but we have a great uh, community of people. And you already saw some of the people I kind of shouted out to them. And we would love to have you over there. We're about 450 and Robert started it in February. So we have four, like every time you have wow. a, every time you have like a live with Terry or like one of these, like we get a bunch more people. So just remember when you ask to join, just answer the questions and you'll get in. That's, so. that's great. And I just love it. You guys are doing that. And uh, I'm going to try and join the, the session next week, the, the Zoom session. And it's top secret, but Terry and I are talking about some ways to get me, Scott Watson, in an embassy RV for a period of time um, at the beginning of the year. And you will not believe where he wants me to go. You'll have to wait. It's going to be top secret. <laughs> yeah. You, it's going so to be thanks. cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have oh to follow God, no you all time. around. Um, I was going to say that every the second Tuesday of every month, the, the owner or the members of the Facebook group, we have a Zoom call. And it's just... Nobody from embassy is really on it. It's not official, but uh, new people, it's a chance for them to ask questions. Um, people, owners or people wannabes answer things. It's a great way, a great community. So, so far we've, uh, we've, we, we have, we've been able to do that. So the second Tuesday of every month we do that. I just love that. Well, I'm hoping to join next week. So, um, so Marge has a question. Now I know what MJK is. Um, wants to know, sure. What's the furthest you have driven in one day? Is the seat driver's seat comfortable and does it drive well? Good, good questions. Especially yeah, for, these for are ladies, right? Cause that's kind of a big, mm -hmm. those are, those are, those are ladies are always a little worried about those things. So tell us about that. Yeah. And sometimes people I've seen in some forums have posted that the ProMaster isn't as comfortable as the Ford Transit or the Sprinter. But for me, again, I'm just grateful to have the van. But I am telling the truth. Uh, the longest I drove was probably when I was trying to get out of Indiana into Wisconsin. And I didn't really want to drive through Chicago, so I tried driving around it. But I... I feel I was on the on the road for like seven hours um, and had to stop here or there, you know, to get gas. But um, it was it was comfortable for me, and it handles. Of course, you know, I just I have I've come to know that I just have to drive it a little bit slower. So when I'm in my car, 70, 75. But when I'm in this van, 65, and I just get over in the right lane. And when trucks pass, there's a little bit of a sway every once in a while. But I find I can handle it. So yeah. Um, so seven hours and yeah, I felt it was, it was comfortable. Great question. Yeah, and the seating position is pretty cool, right? You really look out and, and, and across versus at, at, at the car level. Do you find that to be kind of interesting to see what people are actually doing when they're driving? <laughs> right. Compared to my Toyota Corolla that I've had for 18 yeah. years. <laughs> Wow. Um, enough power for you and no problem with parking, no problem or any problems with parking or anything like that? Nope. I, uh, the power, I, I understand that the Ford Transit probably uh, picks up speed a little bit better. Uh, but I have so far, I mean, I've just, you know, so when I'm going up a hill, if it just takes a little bit and I have to give it the gas, but I, you know, the only thing, and this is one thing that I'm thinking of is, when I travel and have to drive in the mountains, I have to figure out how to do that whole downshifting to let the engine brake. So I was on a hill, a, a, like a small hill in a state park the other day. And I'm like, well, here, put it in manual and see if you can get it to, to shift back and forth. But I, that hill was kind of small and I couldn't really figure it out. So anyways, I have to figure that out. But um, yeah, it handles okay. <laughs> or I'll be awesome. driving around the mountains. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> Take Route 66. Yeah. That's when when you get around the mountains, let me tell you. Except one. Oh, my gosh. Wait till you <laughs> folks see that, um, see the videos. I'm really like getting them up. So Sam's got a great question here, um, Sherry. So Sam says, we love the creativity, quality, and ingenuity of the Embassy product, but we're leery on the inoperable windows. Love to hear your thoughts regarding the Embassy vent system. Yeah, it's very different, right? The windows don't open, so you're kind of on this vent thing. So maybe explain what it is and your experience. Please. Sure. Great Great question, Sam. Um, yeah. Basically, though, if you really wanted windows that would open, you can work with Embassy. However, if you get a Ford Transit, that means you can't have the um, the split air conditioning that's underneath the vehicle. Then you'd have to have the air conditioning. Um, but with the ProMaster, you have to have the air conditioning on the top anyway. So you can have the choice. You'd have to talk with Embassy and work that out. However, I have found that at first I thought, ooh, that's kind of weird. I don't know if I'm going to feel like kind of uh, closed in, but you're really not because uh, I got screens for the back doors and a screen for the side door. So those are open at times when you're, well, obviously not at night, but, um, but during the day. And then one of our members on the Embassy Owners and Wannabe group, that is an Embassy owner made some screens that fit in the cab windows of the Dodge ProMaster, and he um, will work with people to make those. And those, I can put those in at night, and the window slides up, so that provides some. But also the venting system that Terry has, I'm going to tell you one of the first two nights that I was in the Embassy RV, it was 95 during the day, probably was in the 70s at night, very humid. I ran the air conditioner for a little bit, but then I actually, I shut the air conditioner off and I just used the uh, air vents and there was enough air moving around. And the one is aimed right at the, um, well, like where I was sleeping. So I felt that the air moved around quite well. So I haven't had any issues with the fact that the windows don't open up really. But again, That's everybody's amazing. different. Okay. You know, you have to, you have to think for yourself. So. Um, but yeah, at first I thought, I don't know if I'll like this, but it hasn't been an issue for me. Thanks for asking, Sam. Yeah, it's a great question. And I, um, I can't wait to spend some time in an embassy RV because I can't, cannot tell you how uninsulated my Travato is. Now they've gotten a little better, but, um, embassy, their claim to fame is the, the one of, is the, uh, the insulation that we've seen. I've seen it. You probably, any, any of you that have visited the factory has seen it. And I just can't wait to experience weather extreme in an in embassy RV because um, I'm either cooking or I'm freezing in my van with the resource to make it comfortable going all the time. So I appreciate that, Sherry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Nancy's yeah, got a good Scott, question here. Uh, okay. Yes, please. Just one, one comment on the insulation. Right now, I am actually yes. near a very busy highway, very busy parking lot. And um, same thing when I was parked at that Harvest Hose site, uh, the Harvest, or yeah, at the RV Hall of Fame Museum. It's right near an interstate and everything. And I turned right. on the air vents and I thought, I'm going to open the door just to see how loud that is out there. And I couldn't believe the traffic noise once I opened the door. I could hear none of that inside. Okay. Isn't that crazy? That is so yeah. amazing. And what a difference it makes, right? Um, yeah. So we're, we're going to do, um, so Nancy's got a good question. Let me do this. So again, Sherry kind of sent some photos and uh, we didn't want to disturb the camera thing here too much. So maybe just kind of give us a little, what are we looking at? And, and personalizing an embassy RV is always kind of fun, right? Or any van. I think that's why we drive vans because it's a reflection of our personality. What are we looking at here? Sure. I'll so again, I, I call my myself the queen of no mods. But, and as we know, Embassy RV said, you know, because they use the marine plastic and marine vinyl, the command strips won't, um, won't stick on it. But I think there are some products and people are finding ways. But I found that if I kind of tuck things up in between the wall and the cabinet, I could stick some artwork in there. So actually, it's quite interesting because most of the things that I kind of threw in the van or put in the van for color came across my many, um, it'll come out, but I sponsor a lot of kids all over the, the world. And these came from some of my different um, mission trips or visits that I went to meet them. So these things were made by the kids' families that, uh, that are sponsored. So the pillows came from El Salvador. I have artwork from Kenya and Uganda. 
Um, and then the green little thing, it actually has pockets that uh, came from India. And again, all made from uh, the sponsored families when I was on my visits. And I did find that around the microwave, I can put magnets. So I've got a few magnets around That's the so microwave. Cool. Yeah. So personalized and embassy and, LED. So everybody knows I love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And my little sign. Yeah, that tell is, us what the sign is. Uh, yeah, a friend of uh, a friend of mine gave me that uh, for my birthday this year, knowing that I was getting the van and things like that. So she said it doesn't say van on it, but she knows me, and we we don't want to grow up. We just want to stay in her our blanket fort in color. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it kind of you know. Let me ask you this question. So your van experience thus far. Does it feel like when, when somebody, you know, um, middle-aged or whatever, climbs on a bicycle for the first time in a long time and they start pedaling and it almost brings them back from 55 to 15 again, right? Does the van mm -hmm. kind of give you that psyche of rolling back the years? Uh, I, I would say yes. I think uh, when I first got in it and drove off, you know, I had to laugh because there I was. I had left the lights on, so Terry put a little display thing that you can turn the lights off you know and I, I think so I thought oh my gosh here I go and the this just opens up a whole lot of possibilities to me so I yeah I think it does kind of uh, make you feel it, it can be scary and a lot of times when we're growing up things are scary and we just got to jump in and try it mm -hmm. so uh, I've often heard that your your um your your comfort zone is uh is is will never get you any place you know so life happens when you step out of your comfort zone so yeah for sure super proud of you yeah yeah i'm really <laughs> really excited for it and that's a great segue nancy's got a cool question here uh sherry what are you looking forward to going and serving in your embassy what opportunities is this opening up for you uh when are you going to visit southern california <laughs> oh nancy i would love to well, I have a, um, I'm staying around where I live currently, where my Six and Bricks home is now, because I have some volunteer. I'm a big person that volunteers. And so I have worked with youth groups in many different churches. And I have a group of eighth graders. I started with them in sixth grade. And this year they're in eighth grade. So I promised that I would stay around for a bit. I, I will be um, then leaving around November 11th and probably then coming back to Wisconsin in mid-March. So in between those but what i'm and what i'm actually doing is is coming up so i i sponsor kids through compassion international and unbound and part of it is compassion once in a while would fly me here and there to different places and i would help run events and we would get kids sponsored and i would set up the event train all the volunteers tear down send everything in well i don't have to have them pay you know pay to fly me i said hey i can just be in this van and actually on October 14th, there's a, a compassion event down in Milwaukee, and I don't have to worry about driving back at night. I can, um, and the last compassion event we had, and I used the van, 75 kids got sponsored. So I'm keeping a tally, and I'm going to send this to the embassy folks to let them know the, the number of lives that they have impacted by the fact that they built me this van. So that's one thing. The other thing is I do, I volunteer with an organization called Life Promotions and they have Dignity Revolutions and they go into schools with an anti-bullying and anti-suicide campaign and they train teachers. Uh, they have experience-based curriculum and I got that training so I could help with that. But I, unfortunately my embassy wasn't ready for Nashville, Tennessee. So I flew out there this time, but they had a big, um, on Johnny Cash's farm, they had a big, a life Fest where Dignity Revolution was, uh, we've got a, a, a bunch of sponsors the, to help that out. But um, so I can, can can use the van for that. I also volunteer here with an organization called Clothing Across America and they send, they are one of the largest distributors of Bomba socks. So Bomba socks are real. Um, and they send clothes, new clothing all over the United States. So hopefully I can be kind of like their roving reporter or show up at some of these sites and see how they're doing. Um, and then hopefully like if there's a national disaster or something, I mean, um, and there's another YouTube channel that's smaller. Sorry, Scott, I, I, I watch a few, but it's a year to volunteer and they go all over. They want to do a project in all 50 states. 
and they spend two weeks um, and they're sometimes they're in the state park, sometimes they're at like a horse ranch. Um, so wh whatever, whatever God leads me to, uh, that's what I want to serve. And then this isn't service, but my daughter lives in North Carolina and I don't get to see her enough. So I plan on going out to North Carolina and uh, mooch docking in her yard so I can see her and her husband more often. So those are just some of the things. Um, and it's really up to what God, but the big ones are getting uh, kids sponsored and then helping to uh, um, Dignity Revolution and bringing that into the schools to stop bullying. So yeah. it sounds like you're getting a lot of um, getting a lot of new adventures underway, uh, which is pretty yeah. great. Um, so um, let's change um, tactical uh, just a little bit. So Steve heard you talk about internet, and you're okay to go for till the top of the hour, Sherry. Okay. Yeah, perfect. We get some really good mm -hmm. questions in here, and we we may skip some of our regular programming. We may have I saw 147 folks here. Um, which may be an all-time record on What's Up Wednesday. So you are a special, special guest. Um, so Steve wants to know, and I'm kind of curious too. Whoops, not the toilet one. Where'd it go? Uh, please hold. Uh, here. So um, yeah. we'll talk about toilets in a second. Um, what do you use to stay connected to the internet? So you've already kind of discovered how important that is and how you know coverage vacillates wildly, right? So tell us about that. Please. Yeah. So I, you know, when I was evaluating things, it's really about uh, what plan that what plans you already have. Um, and I do believe, and I watched a lot of videos about what people were using. Um, so what I did was I knew it was important to have at least two different carriers. And my phone I have now has AT&T and I really have a, a small data plan. I, I haven't upped that yet, but I learned through um, another you. YouTube group, internet, uh, mobile internet resources. And I think Scott's mentioned that before. And that's, um, they do reviews of all the different data plans and things out there. And I didn't want to go out and buy a lot of things and then not have it work. So I'm starting uh, baby steps. But what I, what I learned from them and from others is that you really should have two different carriers and actually Sprint and T-Mobile with merging. So there's the three, right? Verizon, AT&T, and then so I had AT&T through my phone and I found out that, and I actually went into a store and in a tablet device, you can, um, if, if your tablet is cellular, so an iPad or a Microsoft Surface Pro that's LTE enabled for $20 a month, you can have unlimited data. So I recently ordered a Surface Pro because it's Windows and I feel I'll be able to connect into my clients and that'll give me the AT&T uh, backbone. Uh, and then I, I have, um, I learned about Visible and Visible is a subsidiary of Verizon and it is $25 a month. And I have had this second phone with Visible for a year now, carrying it with me using it as, as a hotspot. It's unlimited data and unlimited hotspot. And they say that they'll throttle you down, but I haven't experienced a lot. So I feel that for $25 a month and I can get this tablet and for an additional $20 a month, I will have unlimited data. And the only other thing, so I looked at the pep wave, like routers and I, and you know, I looked at some of the routers, but you had to buy another data plan and those mm -hmm. all come at a premium. So I feel like with this visible, if you want to know more about visible, just ask us. Um, there's a couple people I know that have are using it that have had good luck, but I mean, really $25, that's taxes, everything. And all you really need to do is you can get a new device or convert, you know, switch over your device. But as long as you're in a, a party of four strangers that you don't even know, because I don't have four other people here with me or four other family members, uh, as long as you're in a plan with four other people, you all get billed separately and it's $25 a month. In fact, somebody wanted to switch to visible. And so I let them use my referral code. So I got it for $5. Anyways, and visible has been really so good. Cool. And I'm excited to, to, to try that uh, SIM card in the, in the tablet and, and see how AT&T does. And so I'll start out with those things. Yep. And it's, it's, those are all great, 
points. And I, I think the key takeaway is you need to have some failovers, a plan A, B, and C. Yeah. Um, and now with things being more open, you can actually go into places right. and use other um, facilities. Um, but for your own personal um, comfort, having at least two um, is really, really important. And unlimited data being the key, right? So thanks yeah. for sharing that. Um, so let me, I was having a little technical difficulty. Um, so let me just talk a, a quick, I, I'm, I'm curious on your thoughts as, as folks travel around. Um, let me see if I can get this question off the screen here. And Gary, it's a great question. Uh, I just want to talk about our RV news. We always like to do RV news. I'm a little late. Um, my PDF thing crashed, so I'm having to use the keynote here. Apologize. But um, the RV news was um, gasoline prices, you may not be surprised, a seven-year high. And well, let me zoom in here for you so you can read this. Um, what I was kind of curious about is what the national average is, about 319. Um, until I got to California, I was finding it to be that or less. Um, it's a dollar two higher than the same week last year. So October 2020, we were kind of out of the COVID lockdown thing. So things were returning. Um, diesels are seeing about the same amount. And California is the most expensive at a $4.40 $4. a gallon average. Um, and the article from our friends at rvnews.com say it's continuing to be around um, supply chain issues. Uh, crude prices are at $78 a barrel, the highest they've been in a very long time. Uh, production seems to be increasing across the the uh, the board, which hopefully will drive down the price. And the summer driving season is over, which I hope um, drives down the price. But uh, it is punishing here in in California when you're rolling there at four you know dollars and seventy five cents a gallon, and you put in twenty five gallons, do the math, all of a sudden you have a hundred dollar bill. I'm like, oh, it just takes your breath away. So aren't we glad we're in vans, Sherry? So we don't have the class A problem with the price. Yeah. Oh my gosh, right? Just insane. Um, so let me show, there's a couple more questions in here that we really want to get to. Um, I see a discussion on, on, um, windshields. Um, I have a crack in mine. You're probably way too new to have a, yeah. hopefully no issues with your windshield yet. Not, um, not yet, but I, and I do have insurance for it. So I, I'm waiting for yes. it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Brenda, here's your question. I see that uh, beyond attention. Hey, Chris and Sandy, thanks for being in. Kind of answer that. They've replaced theirs. My crack has not gotten any any worse. It's in the driver's side way down at the bottom. So I'm just going to let it see what happens. It's been like that for probably a year now. Um, so Steve is kind of curious. Uh, this is an RVer thing. I'm talking about waste, right? So what, oh, what yeah. did you end up choosing? You always got to give the scoop on poop, right? So <laughs> yes, uh, <for> sure. <laughs> I ended up choosing the Sea Head composting toilet. I was thinking about the nature's head and was talking to a couple people. And I know Roads of Life, Robert and Bob, they were talking about the Sea Head. So I checked into that. And actually, in the end, I went with the Sea Head versus the nature head. And I'm, I'm kind of glad. The price is basically the same. But... The sea head comes with parts that I feel like if those would malfunction or break down, I mean, it's a bucket that I could probably get replaced. Um, and the one of the collection unit is basically just a gallon, like you could drink, drink a gallon of water. And then when that <clears throat> when that one gets old, you can just throw that out or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's so far it's been OK for me. Um, I wanted it because I feel it's better on the environment. It's a little bit, uh, I think that if you had two people in the van, both people would have to be comfortable with it. Cause there, there is a difference between, obviously we know there's a difference between men and women, but you know, it takes a little bit of get, getting used to, but so far it's worked out fine for me and, um, you know, I, I can handle it. So I went with a sea head and I'm keeping it. So, Yeah. That's so great. I just love <laughs> men and women have different ways to do that. It's funny. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of you for, for um, not being squeamish about it. And um, it's it's not nearly as bad as a lot of people think, right? It's um, it's just part, part of the tiny tax of just having to do it wherever you want to, right? <laughs> Isn't it kind of cool? It's like in your Walmart parking lot versus tramps in and dealing with that restroom you well, can just kind of use your own yes Isn't it cool? and not only that but i mean i have been in africa i have been in india i have seen all sorts of bathrooms i have used all sorts of bathrooms so 
this is really not that big of a deal. <laughs> if you've been to Paris or Vietnam, yeah, the two yeah. foot pedals and you kind of on top of the hole and then you wash with the bucket. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, let's see, we got a couple more in here. We are just about the top. Does this go fast? It's it does go fast. How fast this, this hour goes. Um, so here we got Gretna, Florida coming in. So thank you for that. Here's Donna and... Um, and Chuck, they're in uh, having a meeting with Terry on Friday. Is that this week? Oh my gosh, you're in Good the luck. queue. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. And here's uh, Roger and Jane uh, coming in from rural Missouri. You folks are moving around a bit. Uh, they just lifted their van uh, with oh, Off yeah, Highway that's Vans. Right. So thank you again for, for nudging. Um, so AJ from Off, High, Off Highway Vans is going to be on the show in December. Uh, so thank you for pushing him along, Roger and Jane. Plus, oh, this is a good one. Deborah, thank you. Hey, yep. if you're enjoying Sherry tonight, and if you like the What's Up Wednesday, that's the Woo and GSL, GSLL, go small love lives. Um, and Sherry, any of that, just give us a thumb up. We sure do appreciate that. We had a really big crowd tonight. Um, Linda, I can't tell any secrets yet, but um, you know what a fisherman <laughs> Terry is? And he's like, well, ice fishing is great in an MCRV because you will never feel the cold. I'm like, I'm kind of tender and 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 scared of the cold so especially ice fishing you like you drive your van out in the middle of the lake and you go ice fishing i'm like i don't know he's trying to talk me into it so that might be what happens um yeah here's ed in the crowd we were talking about you earlier yeah, time, ed. ice fishing uh, so thanks for joining us um so that's what terry's got on the brain and we'll see if we can pull it off um so that might be my first nights in an embassy rv is on a frozen lake which scares the you know what? Um, <laughs> well, you, you won't we'll have to go too far for a cold beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Just go chip some rice and make a martini. Oh my gosh. Um, so let's take one from uh, Mason Mike. This is a good question. Then we'll kind of end with um, scanning. Oh, in fact, let's do this quick. Um, this is, uh, oh, this has got me off my game a little bit. So this is a viewer recommendation. We brought this back from a few weeks ago uh, because Sherry made this recommendation and mood lighting in your van is pretty cool, right, Sherry? Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab it. Yeah. So what you're looking at here is, um, and I have similar things in a different format. They're led lights. You, you kind of click the button and it and wrote, mine ro- rotates through colors and then you could turn off the overhead lights and it just really brings a soothing environment. Look at that. Uh, let me take that off so you guys can see that. For, so I know, yeah. Screens. You probably, you yeah. can't see the color. It's green. It's blue. It's yellow. Sorry, you can't. Yeah. Maybe if I turn okay. it off. Okay, we can see. It. Yeah, and it's a it, it charges by USB, and you just touch it, and then it goes off. And it's got three uh, levels of white light uh, that are bright. So it's another way to kind of conserve your to put a, a mood lighting in your van and conserve your your batteries. Yeah. Just got yeah, them off I just, of Amazon. I found them- to be so cool um and it just helps me kind of bring down the day um because unlike your lights which dim mine are either on or off and they're so garish and uh, i like to leave everything open except the bedroom so at night it just creates a, a mood and people can kind of still see them but it's pretty dark and i just love them so if you haven't experimented with mood lighting in your van i need to make a video about that and we'll do mood lighting van tours when we get together at a van because they're so great um so almost done. Let me share this with you. Um, so I'm curious how many people have been to um, Memphis, Graceland, Elvis's house. Um, if you haven't been there, that needs to be on your bucket list, right? He has so influential on the music scene. And that's kind of our, our um, song of the week. Because um, I've recently discovered him again know, a couple months ago. And I cannot get this song out of my head. And if I'm in a bad mood, I put this on and my toe is snapping. And if you haven't played Don't Be Cruel in a while... I'm recommending you do that. Um, Elvis Presley released in 1956. Wondering what you were doing in 1956. I wasn't even an idea of my parents at that point. <laughs> but by 1961, he sold 6 million copies of that uh, song. And according to Billboard Records, it's the 197th greatest song ever out of 500. So it's kind of middle of the pack, but if you haven't played this, and if you have Apple Music, there's an Essentials. Um, it's probably got, I don't know, 30 songs on there. But if you really haven't been to Graceland, it is an amazing place to take your van. Um, there's an RV park nearby. You get a walk through his plane. 
Um, Sherry, have you been to Graceland? I'm just curious. It's kind of in, in Memphis, t Tennessee, right? No, I have not. I've been to Nashville a couple of times, but it is uh, on my list to go see. And depending on what month that was released in 1956, I was on on the way. <laughs> I was. My mom was carrying me. <laughs> you were in the oven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is great. Um, but uh, yeah, Memphis, you've got to go see um, Elvis. Just and when you walk through the rooms of his records and, and the impact he had on the music industry. It's just mm -hmm. astounding. Um, yeah. And kind of like when you get to Nashville and you go through the Johnny Cash Museum, it's a very similar experience, except the, the Graceland is ginormous, right? Um, yeah. Okay, a couple more questions here. And let me do this quick, uh, 55 toward the hour. We like to do these at 50 after. We're gonna to look at um, Clarence. Uh, we just love pet pics. Oh, um, Clarence. This is Clarence. I know, he's a Brittany. Um, Kind of a cool name for a dog, right, Clarence? Um, a shelter rescue, we love those. Camp and champion, according to Sam. Um, Sherry, any, uh, so Sam, Sam, thank you for sharing Clarence. That is a happy looking dog, uh, right? Uh, any any plans for a pet in your van? Well, first of all, I have to say, seeing Clarence, I just think of the last line of, uh, it's a, it, oh wait, Attaboy Clarence, right? It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. Attaboy Clarence, because he got his wings. So uh, I probably will not have, not get, there's no plans for a pet right now. I have some grand dogs and grand cats that I will visit, but uh, traveling in a van with pets is a whole other level. And I can see why the AC is much more important to, to that. So I probably won't get a pet because it'll be something that I need to, if I'm volunteering a lot, then it wouldn't be fair to the animal. So I will just enjoy all of the van pets along the way. <laughs> I will be like and their aunt. And there's a lot of them, right? <laughs> I will be like their aunt. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. They're just great icebreakers um, in any campground setting. Um, pets are just great. And we're definitely getting a cat. Um, and uh, beyond attentions, I, I keep running across Luke photos get served up by Apple photos to me. And I'm like, oh, we got to get a cat. So toward the end of the year, we get back to home base. So Mason Mike has a quick question. We're just about out of time. But um, Scott and Sherry, once things open up a little bit more back to normal, um, have you ever considered caravan to Mexico or up to Canada? What are your international travel plans, Sherry? Anything? around those two countries? Uh, well, I would, I would love to go to, I would love to go to both Mexico and Canada. If I went to Mexico though, I've watched several videos of uh, different channels with that. I would want to go with somebody because I'm not sure I'm brave enough to go by myself, you know, as a solo female. Uh, however, I have, I mean, I've flown into African stuff myself, but it's a, it's a little bit different, right? Driving the van and that. So I, I would, potentially join a, a caravan and go with a group of people in Canada. Yes, I would love to uh, someday. The looks uh, fabulous out there. Uh, I follow a couple channels that they're in Canada. So um, you just never know. I think that the, the it's, you know, it's just, although if I went to Mexico, I would probably be looking for places where I could help people. You know, I would load up my van with clothes and things and be like, Oh, I don't know. So anyways, yeah, <laughs> but I can see you doing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And that's totally sure. cool. Um, so, um, so, uh, Mason, Mike had a, um, comment on the tow hall it says when going up to Flagstaff or mountain driving works great. Um, what I typically do is I don't use the tow hall. I should experiment with that, but I just put the manual gear into five, five seems to be the sweet spot. Um, otherwise it's trying to downshift all the time. You've probably experienced that already. Um, Sherry from six to five and, um, and, um, uh, Roger in the audience actually has a transmission thermometer and shows that, that downshifting actually heats up the transmission a little bit more than just leaving it in fifth gear. And you do drop down in speed. I'm okay with that. I'm totally with you. Oh, I'm yeah. always the slow guy and there's nothing quite as pleasant as being passed by a semi. <laughs> 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 and it's just, it's so surreal to me. I'm like, you guys are supposed to be going slow and you're passing me at, you know, the speed limit. What's up? Um, and really the, the great advice, and you've probably done this already, Sherry, is just get the heck off the highways, get on the byways and take right. the state and county roads. It, that was one huge takeaway from Route 66 and more of that content coming, um, yep. ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we are just out about timeline to scan for one more or two more awesome questions. Um, so Spokane Steve is saying that he's had his um, – Travato GL now for three weeks. He's still learning how to drive. So um, 
Hang in there, Steve. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, uh, so this might be a good question to end with, Sherry, about the battery you mentioned, lithium. So maybe just kind of give us your experience where to go. Um, oh, dear. I just lost it. I apologize. It wasn't set up in the... Um, battery power on your, on your lithium. How's that working for you? Pretty, pretty robust. Yeah, it, it's doing good. And when I keep it parked, first of all, if, if I keep it parked in my driveway or I, I'll drive it on, you know, park it on the street and shade, uh, I, I'll, and I'm not going to go any place for a couple of days. I have the ability to just, just turn the battery off. Uh, so it's, the battery's been off like maybe a week or two and I turn it back on and it's at the same percentage. So I have complete control over you know, turning that on, turning the inverter on or off, depending if what I'm going to use. And because the embassy has so many 12 volt uh, weight things instead of, I think it's just the TV, the microwave and any kind of a 110 plugs and you need the inverter. So I haven't had to use those a lot, uh, but I find that, you know, I can drive for like 15 minutes and it'll charge up like at least 6% or whatever. So I haven't found, um, I, I've, I've found the battery is, is good. Of course, if you're going to use the air condition, that con air conditioner, which is still 12 volt, that consumes a little bit more. The refrigerator, I think I had like, like just if I turned it on, it was at 100%. I had the refrigerator on and I was using the air vents and overnight it maybe went down 4%. So it's been really, really good. Um, battery so far and I really have to I'll I'll take it out and really have to test it but um, yeah it's been good I think it's going to be great it charges fast and I don't even have the second alternator yet which I'm in line to get once Terry gets the bracket so I'm behind Phyllis I'm behind Phyllis <laughs> That's so great. But yeah I, well, I, have, just, I have yeah yeah isn't the ability to do all that you just talked about in complete silence and complete freedom without having to go find some place to plug in. I mean, that's the that's the number one thing for me for, for lithium. It's a big investment, but the freeing of being away from shore power to allow you to do all that stuff you just talked about, it's pretty miraculous. You make your own electricity. It's really, um, so thank you for kind of yeah validating. <laughs> it's no pretty problem. cool, right? Yeah. Um, so one more thing. So Anthony wants to know, and where can I see more about Embassy RVs? Um, so certainly go to their website, embassyrv.com. Encourage you, um, Sherry, um, to go to the Embassy RV Facebook group. So tell us about that one more time. Yep. So Anthony, if you want to go to, if you're, and we have a couple of people that created a Facebook account just to join the group. So feel free to do that if you do, you're not on Facebook, uh, but join it. Just search for Embassy Owners and Wannabes. Uh, you will see this little, see this little symbol here that Robert designed, and just ask to join, answer the questions, and you're in. Then you can ask a bunch of questions. Uh, the owners will sometimes will do little videos. People will ask, "Hey, how do you sit uh, gravity fill the water?" Uh, we'll do pictures. We can do things like that. Some people have actually planned trips to Indiana to see, uh, visit embassy to talk to them, and of course when. Scott and Embassy has those meetups. It's a good way to go down. Um, or even if you're in the group and depending on where you live, we've had, I, I know Florida and Texas are hotbeds for our members. Uh, they're they're kind of like tied. How many members? We need another Florida one. We need another Texas one. But uh, if you're anywhere close and want to, I know several of our, our owner members have um, made their vehicles or their RVs open to people to come and visit and walk through them. So that's another way to see them as well. So yeah, we have a great community and I just want to give a big, I wish I could name all their names, but I, I might forget somebody. So I love you all. You're, it's just a great community. And, you know, we even, I actually read a book of one of our members. I won't say her name, but she was a missionary growing up and wow, does she have a story. So I can't wait to meet her in person. She's got, yeah, it, it, it's really a special story. So anyways, um, but we have a great community. So thank you all of the EOA members. Uh, <laughs> love you all, you know, and a shout out. I don't know if any of my youth group are on tonight or any of my church family, but uh, thank you for letting me skip. Uh, 
tonight, youth group, so that yes. I could be on here today. I'm very excited about yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. And, and just, you know, a big shout out and a thumb up for Sherry tonight, please. Um, comment below. I scan these for questions what you miss. Um, join us every Wednesday, Monday, the 11th. Terry Minix, VP, is going to come on live, and we're, that's an exclusive thing with him. We've got some prepared um, content. He's going to uh, talk about some uh, new model or models. Um, and by then I will have posted on my website, some Van Buries, and I think you're going to be really excited about it. And the embassy is going to take part in some way on a couple of those. So, um, so lots going on and I just, it's all about learning, sharing, you deciding what's best for you. And then this fellowship sharing that you're talking about is just so, so important and the van's important. Don't get me wrong, but to me, once you get past the van and you start to realize the places, the people, the culture, and realize how awesome everybody is in most cases, that to me is what it's all about. And um, right. so, Sherry, thank you for, for joining us tonight. And um, and thank you for everybody for watching and uh, commenting. Great questions. I think we had an all-time audience of 147 is what I saw. So clearly you're a movie star. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone. So thank you, everyone. And we will see you soon. Um, Sherry, sit tight. And we'll see you 